Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode from The Rock to the Cloud uh, with me, Tom Hall. Um, I'm here today uh, talking all things Windows Server, talking Azure, talking hyper-converged data center, all of that kind of goodness um, is what we talk about. Um, and, you know, as always, I've managed to I've managed to wrangle a special guest. Um, again, uh, we're very, very lucky to have today uh, an actual proper expert. As always, you're not just listening to me babble on about absolute rubbish. Uh, we've got a proper actual certified expert in the house. Um, so before we talk about what we're going to talk about today, I would like to introduce our guest. So it's uh, Pierre Roman. He's uh, here all the way from, where, where are you coming to us from today, Pierre? I am located in Ottawa, Canada. Canada, Ottawa, Canada. That sounds so exotic to us Brits um, who, um, you know, I'm coming close from uh, near, in between Swindon and Reading. Um, not quite as, not doesn't count, sound quite as exciting as, uh, uh, as where you're from. Um, so, uh, well, Roman, it, tell us it, a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, as you mentioned, I'm here. Uh, I'm a senior cloud advocate, uh, which really is, those titles don't really mean much. Uh, what it does mean is that my work is to uh, promote the platform, but also to take feedback from the community. And in my case, my community is the hybrid worker, the uh, on-prem server hugger, uh, the cable puller, and the security people and operations. All of those people put together, that's my community. So they tell me what they like and don't like uh, about our products uh, in terms of this doesn't work in this scenario and so on. And then I work with the product group to see whether or not we can address that. So that's my role in a nutshell. Uh, I've been in IT cool. for, and I'm going to be aging myself here severely. Uh, I've been in IT here for about 30 years. Uh, back in the days of Novell, I think the first one I installed was Novell 1.5 or Novell 2. Uh, back when the most powerful PC we had in the office was an 8088 with the math coprocessor. Nice. And it was oh. probably about the same size as the room you're in now. Um, but you, you, look, you're not that old because you're, I, you know, my spies out there tell me that you're actually part of uh, the bad gamer community because uh, you're so good at gaming. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know what I mean? Like, you you know, you're only, you're only as old as the games you play. Um, so, right. you know, look, we very much... <laughs> we very much appreciate you making the time and look, like I said, it's good to have somebody who actually knows what we're talking about. So what are we going to talk about today? I think we're going to talk about storage migration service, which is SMS. Now, where I'm from in the UK, we call text messages SMS. I don't know what they're called in Canada, but they, I, if they're called SMS, so like I might Same be thing. SMSing somebody, but we're not texting anybody, are we, Roman? We're going to, you know, what is what is storage migration service? You, you Can you maybe explain that to everybody? Yes. Uh, first, SMS. Um, Microsoft really loves our acronym. Uh, we use them uh, anywhere. We even have two different division within Microsoft internal uh, that have both call uh, that are both the same acronym CSE. One is customer software engineering, and the other one is core service engineering. But we have the same. So when you're ever telling somebody, "Oh, I'm working with CSE," you have to be more a bit more precise. That's the case in this one too. So SMS or okay. storage migration service is a service that's built into um, Windows admin console and on top of, sits on top of Windows that allows you to migrate file shares. Because okay, go ahead. Uh, so it's a feature. It's a feature in Windows Server 2019. It's a feature of. Windows Admin Console that runs on top of 2019 and, and other um, versions. Cool. Okay. So what versions can you, you know, what versions of Windows Server can you migrate from? Because I'd imagine you can probably only go back so far. Uh, well, anything really that's a Windows Server since 2003. 2003. Okay. From. So because really yeah, so it, it leverages it, it leverages uh, SMB and it leverages uh, existing technologies that have been present for uh, a number of year years okay okay decades. and it, 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 well it is well that was just going to say that it is decades because 2000 we're in 2000 I, I, sometimes you have to remind people that are in IT right that we are in 2021 because 
you know, if you're still running your server on 2003, that is a long, long time ago. Do you know yep. what I mean? That's 18 years ago. That's, that's like two decades. Yep. Like, it's a, it's a long time. And I appreciate that, like, you, you know, you were only working in IT for 10 years when that happened. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> But, and you really think about too that those servers not only because because the the mentality of the IT worker or the operations folks is if it ain't broke don't touch it. Yeah. So if yeah. your file server is there and it's running and it's doing its job and you've still got capacity and like everything else is hunky dory that that's fine. However, with older servers that because they're out of support and our support life cycle is as five years of mainstream and five years of extended for a total of 10 years in terms of security patches for example so those servers are no longer patches patched so those servers mm. uh, and if you're looking at this uh 2003 and 2008 uh, the version of smb that's used is not as secure as the current version of smb that's been uh that's let's say 2019 2016 2019 servers are running yeah so if you've got older versions of those protocols running then you are vulnerable for other things such as uh crypto malware where somebody's going to drop a, a phishing attack on your company somebody's going to click on the link because users click on every link that's in their emails and then all of a sudden all your files are encrypted and you don't know why that happened yeah, i'm not I've saying that being on the yeah, I'm not saying that the current version is going to completely protect you, but it's going to mitigate some of those risks. And I yeah. guess that would be a conversation for another uh, episode. No, I mean, absolutely. And, you know, security is one thing, capacity is another, you know, speed and performance, all of these things come into it. And you know what? 10 years worth of support, i.e. we actually support our software for 10 years, is that I, I think is pretty reasonable. Um, you know, and it's not like, you know, that's not like us forcing you to buy new software. It's just there are improvements. Um, and surely yes. you want those improvements, right? It's not um, only so reasonable, but it's also predictable because this this policy was put in back in the days of Steve Ballmer, where our customers were saying um, that they were confused as to this, because if you had this server, if you had like a, a SQL server, it was um, supported for X amount of years. If you had a Windows server, it was supported for X amount of years. There was no real um, standard. When mm. that policy came in, every enterprise product had to adhere to that policy. Five years of mainstream support, five years of extended support for a total of 10 years. Which you know that's that's good because it gives people peace of mind but it also allows them to work on a reasonable time plane uh, it's you know plan for the future which is you know, you know excellent now um sms um so i'm just going to text you sms um storage migration service it, does that allow people to do more than is it just a windows server service you know can you do can you do other other platforms other sources like what you know so, you know, is, is so the service stuff? itself this the storage migration service itself runs on Windows. However, okay. you can migrate from all of those Windows servers that we've mentioned, uh, 2003, 2008, 2008, R2, uh, even to the small business servers uh, and the essentials uh, servers that we had for a while, and even the storage servers in, uh, that, uh, that have been the SKU for storage servers. But you can also migrate from uh, Linux, and we've tested, and we've got support for, and I'm looking at my list right now, so I'm so I don't forget any. Uh, CentOS, yeah. uh, Debian, Linux, Red Hat Enterprise, SUSE Linux, Ubuntu, uh, and uh, a number of versions of Samba servers. So you can migrate yeah. from those to a uh, Windows uh, server file share. You can also migrate from a clustered. So if you've got a clustered file yeah. uh, file server. You can actually yeah. migrate from the cluster to a, a new server, and, and the reason okay. we do that, and the, the reason that 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 server uh, or that service, I should say, is yeah. is uh, really needed. If any of you listeners uh, have ever tried to migrate a file share from one server to another, uh, typically we used to use that like Robocopy or something to that effect. You have no idea how many parameters, uh, uh, flags, uh, files, hidden files that it misses. 
So you copy it and then you copy it again and oh, all of a sudden you got more files than you did before or you think you're done and somebody says, hey, what about this file? And this is a way to organize it so that you can migrate, but also manage the uh, cutover because somebody in a document is going to have a link to WAC WAC server name, WAC file share name, WAC file name. Well, if you migrate to a new server, what happens to all these documents with these links that are embedded in it? Yeah, yeah. And that's and one of the strengths. Yeah, you don't, and also you don't want to miss like whacking people. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, that's cool. And yeah, I love it. I, I, I love again, um, like uh, IT pros from across the pond are always uh, a whacking stuff, which you know, it always it makes me laugh every time you guys say it. it's brilliant. Um, and so, um, you know, it's not just like different platforms that you come from. So it's not just Linux, uh, you, you know, Ubuntu, or um, in fact, uh, well. Samba server, which is obviously everyone's favorite server because it's Samba time, right? Um, but um, in terms of um, like, yeah, exactly. We'll just have a quick Samba. Come on, Pierre. <laughs> no, yeah, you really don't are. want to see me dance. Uh, no. <laughs> I love it. Um, but, it, you know, it's, it, 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 I imagine you can do like different file versions or, or you know, different, you know, hard drive types or, or you know, these kind of things. It, it, it does all sorts of stuff, right? Well, it doesn't care. Okay. Like the service itself doesn't care because it talks to the server. So if the server has got different drive type, if it's a, a connected to a, a fiber channel to to a LUN where you've got your your storage mounted, it doesn't it doesn't care because it's talking mm -hmm. to the server. It's not talking to the storage directly. I see. Uh, which is another one is that uh, not too long ago, I can't remember the exact dates, uh, we do have support for some network attached uh, storage devices such as yeah. like the NetApp, uh, the FAS arrays, um, the CIFS servers, or basically uh, ser uh, running uh, on tap nine. Um, so uh, network storage account, the network attached storage is now becoming uh, more and more supported as a uh, source of a migration. Okay, and that makes sense. So I suppose you can then consolidate multiple sources and multiple servers all at the same time, I'm guessing? Well, you can run multiple migration at the same time. Uh, consolidating servers from multiple sources to a single destination is yeah. not necessarily supported because there are some inherent problems there where uh, you may have, because um, typically IT pros and operations folks, when they set up a server, uh, they tend to set them all up the same, where you put the yeah. OS on the drive C and you put the data on drive X and you have a uh, top level folder called shares and under that you'll yeah. have your groups but when you're trying to migrate that, and if you have conflicts from one server to another that have the same names, then it starts creating all kinds of problems and starts renaming. So we don't quite uh, recommend or support um, consolidation of servers. You can migrate sure. one and then try to migrate the second one to the same destination. But when it yeah. runs through its analysis, it'll say, I can't do this, I can't do this, and it'll give you some some issues yeah. where it, what's it's going to find. Okay, so it might lock particular files that get migrated, or it might not, or it might exclude some things from transfers. Is it, it, you know, is it is it doing it on purpose? Is that going to be detrimental to the results, or you, you, like how does that work within the you know the storage migration service? It, you, you know, when you when you're doing that, like what happens if you get locked files once you've migrated some? You know, some data across from one place to another. Okay, so for locked files, so if a, if a file is locked by an exclusive application lock, so if your application yeah. application X is running somewhere in your environment and it's got those files locked, uh, right? Got you. This migration service is not going to migrate them because it can't break that lock. But what it does sure. is it retries several times, and if it still misses it then it's just yeah. going to mark it and then it'll carry on. Uh, so okay. the, 
best practice typically is to uh, basically you run your migration, but you yeah. don't do the cutover. Uh, okay. So, that so you end up with like two versions or two copies, and then you will run the migration several times. So you can run that job several times. So if let's say we're planning next Friday, not tomorrow, but next Friday, we're planning a migration from server one to server two. So yeah. I would run it, let's say this weekend to do the bulk. Yeah. And then on, on Monday night, I would run it again to try to catch what was locked. And then I would yeah. run it again several times. And then when I look at, and I, uh, operations folks will understand that, that we're going to do the cutover in a maintenance window. You don't have to, it's just best practice. Mm -hmm. So you say sure. next Friday uh, uh, at five o'clock when everybody's going to the pub, uh, we're going to lock the environment, we're going to log everybody out, and we're going to actually do the cutover. Then you run it one last yeah. time, and because at that point everybody is locked out, the files should all be uh, unlocked, and then it migrates whatever is left, because you can run it, it's, it's cumulative, so it doesn't restart from the beginning, it just, whatever <clears> it <throat> missed the first time, it'll do the second time. Okay, and then that just becomes more efficient, right? It does become more efficient, but on the last time, that's when you turn on the uh, the cutover, which basically takes the identity of server one and makes server two impersonate that server one. So the the the, the SMB mm. share name are going to be the same. The server name is going to be the same. The IP address is going to be the same because as much as we tell our users not to use IP address to do links for uh, servers, there's a developer somewhere that's going to put in an IP address or hard code an IP address uh, into yeah. a link somewhere. So the IP addresses are migrated, the name of the servers are migrated. Uh, so that's the next person that will logs into the system and goes back to WAC WAC server one, WAC share name, yeah. WAC file, will still get their file even though the file is now physically located on a new server. Yeah, they'll, they'll never even know. And are oh. domain, yeah, I mean, a domain uh, migration is also supported with, with, with SMS? No, no, yeah, uh, your destination and uh, your source and destination must be in the same domain. So, and you won't even do across uh, work groups. So it has to be in the same domain. Okay, that's cool. Um, another question um, that, uh, that, that we've got here is um, clusters. Are clusters um, as sources or destinations supported? They're supported as both source and uh, okay. destination. Cool. Um, and it, um, but it also really... de it depends on the OS that's running on those. So for, for your destination and uh, make sure that you have the, mm -hmm. the right version and patched. Because I know from, let's like, say, Windows 2019, when it first came out, uh, there was some, uh, it wasn't supported, but with some of the patches and the uh, updates that we've had since, uh, and it's all uh, documented in, uh, on uh, the storage migration documentation, which can be found at HTTPS, whack, whack, aka dot ms slash store mig, S-T-O-R-M-I-G. Um, and that's the know, documentation. <laughs> I don't know how you remember those uh, addresses. I mean, that's, yeah, that's amazing. Well, you're sort of, you know, leading me to sort of, I suppose it's, it's the end of the chat really now. I mean, there's a couple of other things that we could ask you. So, you know, uh, our local groups um, and users uh, are able to migrate, do, do they all migrate yeah. across, yeah? Yes, so that's one of the things that storage migration does when it first, so you, you select your source, then it goes and does an analysis of the source. Uh, what is it running? Does it have the right patches? Is it connected? Okay. How many server? How many shares does it have? How many files does it have? Which, and then it looks at the ACLs uh, or the uh, access control list of all of those shares and all of those files. And if it finds a local group and local users, will then uh, recreate to those local groups and local users on the destination yeah. server. Brilliant. Excellent. And um, well, look, we've asked you loads of fit, quick fire questions, I suppose, about uh, SMS. And I think, you know, I think in terms of understanding, you know, where it is and what people can do with it, I mean, it's an essential part of, I suppose, what the, you know, the, the IT expert toolkit is now nowadays, right? And, you know, it's part of our, our, our latest software. So that's, you know, that's brilliant. 
where would you suggest the best person or the best place, not the best person, because obviously you're the best person, but we can't have everybody come and talk to you. But if they can't come and talk to you, Pierre, where would you recommend that they go to find out about, uh, you know, storage migration service? Okay. So for storage migration service, uh, the documentation, which <laughs> includes some tutorials and includes uh, some step-by-step uh, -step, uh, can be found at the address that I gave earlier, which is uh, aka.ms slash S-T-O-R-M-I-G, it's for store MIG. Uh, that's just a short link for a very long URL yeah. that I will never remember in my life. Uh, <laughs> in terms of talking to me and my team, uh, your audience can reach us uh, either on Twitter uh, or on our Discord server, because we do have a Discord server for uh, the community to actually discuss these things. So it can be found Sweet. on aka.ms slash itopstalk dash discord. And there, cool. uh, my my entire team uh, looks at that. And even uh, Ned Pyle is uh, part of that community. And Ned is the uh, godfather of storage migration service. Um, <laughs> wow. Actually participates in the discussion. So if you've got some questions, uh, you can uh, come to our community and uh, check it out online. That's that's amazing. I think uh, you'd be surprised. Uh, I think people will do that. So look, um, We've, we've talked a little bit about, you know, storage migration service. I think, um, you know, it does a lot more than certainly I thought it did, which is great. So thanks for explaining that. Um, this is the silly bit of the show where the guys that make the show, the guys behind the scenes that you can't see. Actually, before we do that, right, by the way, uh, audience, you just need to know what a pro uh, Pierre is. Pierre, can we just do, can we just go through your cameras? Can we just go through, oh. can we do camera one, camera two, like in, um, like in the movies? Camera one, camera two. Camera two, there nice. he is. <laughs> so you get a different a view of my office. It's pretty, it's oh, a pretty cool if office. I was, or I could basically do a, uh, a hands-on demo here. Sweet. I mean, look, how, how cool is that? I mean, like, easily, easily the coolest guest. I, no, I don't want I don't, I don't to say that because then other, other guests might hear. Uh, no, it's good. No, Pierre, they've definitely, uh, definitely been great chatting with you today. But um, the, the producers of the show like to do something silly. Uh, it's called the Server Meme Review. Um, basically, they're going to flash up um, a, I suppose, uh, a silly couple of memes. Um, they're server related. As you can tell, I'm super technical when it comes to server, so I probably don't know what they mean, uh, but I think you'll probably get them. So uh, let's see the memes and uh, get the reactions. Now, audience, uh, again, as always, if you've got a silly meme that you want to send into us or you've got comments on the memes, we do want to know. So please send them in to, uh, to me and uh, you know, we'll make sure that we get them onto the show. So three, two, one, let's see the first meme. You need migration. It's a jour thing. Oh my good lord! Even oh I know God. that's bad. That's okay, so first bad. First of all, uh, you need migration, yes, but it's not an Azure thing. It's a Windows Server thing. <laughs> so it's so bad, and I it's like the so fact bad. that you're it is, it is, it is almost like, I, I know you, you've got the, you probably, I don't know if you get the British version of The Office with Ricky Gervais, but that is, that yes. is Ricky Gervais right there. Like, it's not Ricky Gervais, but it, it's a guy who thinks he's Ricky Gervais, right? Yeah, he's the guy that's pointing at the guy, at somebody else when the user comes in and says, where are my files? Because I did not use servers, uh, server migration service. So he's like, talk to him. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly it. Like he's he's got it totally wrong. Oh, brilliant! Right, okay. So, uh, meme number two. Right, three, two, one. Here we go. It's my favorite bit. Uh, you must construct additional servers. You must construct additional <laughs> servers. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny. It's just a lot. Of, I mean, that's a lot of servers. So, do they really need more servers? I suppose well, we do. When you say it's a lot of servers, it's all a perspective thing. For somebody who works in a small office, yes, that's a lot of servers. If you visited a uh, Azure data center, which not a lot of people do because it's even myself, I haven't actually been allowed to see a real one. Uh, this is not a lot of servers. But I yeah, am yeah. amazed at how clean that wiring is because typically uh, they all look like spaghetti. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, no, I think, I mean, that's pretty good. I, I, I know I did actually arrange uh, a customer visit uh, for some, some partners of mine way back to go to an Azure data center. And, and um, they actually got, had to get picked up in a, in an unmarked van at a specific time and they had to be blindfolded. So that is like genuinely true. That like, that is true. Uh, so, you know, we do appreciate that, but that is, you're, you're right. It's quite nice, quite nice and neat. Um, yeah, cabling. it's Utopia. Uh, I don't I, believe it. It must be, it must be Photoshopped. Yeah, it's, it's not, that's not a real, that's not real. <laughs> That's the, that's my data center that I remember. There you are. Is that you in the data center? <laughs> that could be me. I have uh, I've been known to be in that position in my thirty years. That the problem is always the uh, can you patch the uh, the conference room uh, into the outside network, and I have to find a wire uh, that yeah. connects the two. <laughs> Oh dear! Look, I'm, I'm I'm so glad that uh, I'm just I'm just a rubbish sales guy, and I've never had to do that. So, uh, you know, look, Roman, thank you so much for all of your work behind the scenes, plugging in those patch cables. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, you probably saved at least one or two of my meetings. Um, look, I think if we were just to summarise really quickly. Um, kind of what we learned today about uh, you know the you know, storage migration service. Um, you know, where, where, like, where is it accessible and kind of what are the key benefits that you would suggest that people can take away from the chat we've heard today? Okay, key benefits, number one, is that uh, using a service that will enable you to move from an unsecure platform to a secure platform easily, effectively, and cost efficiently, because that's not a, you don't have to pay anything that's built into uh, Server 2019 and uh, um, Windows and Min Console is going to bring you uh, benefits in terms of a more stable and more efficient environment. That's number one. Uh, I think number two is um, you don't have to lock yourselves, like you're not locked into from one source to one destination. Whatever Generally speaking, whatever uh, storage solution you're currently running, we can we can accommodate and migrate to a uh, physical server. But one thing that the migration service does do now, if you want to, for example, migrate to a virtual server, if you're getting rid of your data center or moving an office or something, uh, you can use the uh, storage migration service to actually create an appropriate VM for you in Azure and will migrate the storage to that VM. Wow. So you, it's truly the best of both and it's built into the software that you get today and probably have already if you're a 2019 customer um, or, you know, one of our future customers, one of our future versions, which I can't talk about, but, that, you know, they, there could be future versions of, of our software that might also have this software in. So that's, uh, yeah, you heard it at first. Oh, my God. That's so awkward. All uh, right. Okay. Well, we, <laughs> we will move on very quickly from that point. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's me putting my foot in my mouth. Um, look, thanks so much for joining us today on uh, From the Rock to the Cloud. Um, you know, keep your eyes out for the next episode. And remember, everybody, if you've loved what you've heard, if or you want to hear different things or specific things or talk to more experts like Pierre about things that they actually know, uh, then we will do that and make sure that you get that. So please leave your comments in uh, the comment section and uh, drop us your thoughts. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And thank you very much again, Pierre. It's been a pleasure. Um, and um, yeah, we will uh, look very much to talking to you again in the future. Thank you very much.